You know, I may have titled this video Pokemon Channel Review, but if I'm being honest, that's not exactly a great name for this one. Unlike most of my other reviews, the reason that I made this video is slightly different. I recently played through Pokemon Channel again as somewhat of a sanity check. You see, almost all discussion of this game online is overwhelmingly negative, with many people citing that this is one of the worst Pokemon games of all time. That opinion is one that is starkly different from my memories with Pokemon Channel. So welcome, not just to a review of Pokemon Channel, but to the defense of Pokemon Channel. I think what helps ground this somewhat obscure 2003 Pokemon game is looking at it as a sequel to the N64's Hey You Pikachu. It was made by the same developer, Umbrella, and broadly speaking, it is the same kind of game, in that it isn't much of a game at all, in the traditional sense. Pokemon Channel is a digital pet simulation, where your digital pet is Pikachu, but Umbrella decided not to go with a microphone peripheral this time as its main gameplay hook. Instead, the real focal point of the game are the Pokemon channels that you watch on your Pokemon TV. The game opens up with you being delivered a television by a group of Magnemite. Upon turning on the TV for the first time, Professor Oak tells you that you have been selected as part of a focus group to test their all-new Pokemon-themed programming. Your task is simple. Watch the channels with Pikachu. That's it. Some of these channels are ones you'll want to tune into every day, and some of them are more one-off and fun gimmick channels. You can zoom your camera right on top of the TV so that the programming on the TV itself encapsulates your entire screen, or you can zoom out and watch Pikachu's reactions to all the different shows. The marquee channel within this television is the Pichu Bros. The Pichu Bros is a five-part anime series where, when its five-minute segments all get brought together, form a full-length episode of a Pokemon anime. Watching all five parts of this series is the closest thing this game has to a win state, but you won't be able to binge through it in one sitting Netflix season style. The later parts get divvied out to you over the course of the game as you progress, so you'll need to watch some of the game's other channels to pass the time. Unlike Pichu Bros, most of the other channels feature some level of interactivity with the player. Squirtle, Squirtle, Squirt, Squirt, Squirtle. The shopping channel with Squirtle is going to be one of your daily go-tos. It's framed as a teleshopping QVC equivalent where different merchandise gets cycled in each day. The merchandise may be collectible Pokemon cards that you can store in a binder, custom televisions with their own visual filters, or miscellaneous toys and knickknacks to decorate your room with. There's a game show channel hosted by Wobbuffet where you get to watch Pokemon contestants show their knowledge of the Poke world and a chance for Poke prizes. And occasionally you can chime in too and earn some cash with the right answer. There's a news channel where all the latest current events get read to you by Psyduck and on site interviews get conducted by Meowth. There's a weather channel hosted by Slowbro where you get told the in-game weather. Slow, slow. If the clips you've seen so far are any indication, even when the game is at its most interactive, it's still a relatively passive experience, and I totally get why a lot of people find that off-putting. 
but I wanted to get this video out there to let you know if you go into this game with the right expectations, this game is charming as hell. I think part of it is because of how unique it is. Pokemon Channel feels like it's an experimental project, yet at its center is the most profitable media IP in the entire world. And instead of making Pikachu the main character, it makes the main character a literal TV, and delegates Pikachu to a supporting role. The TV and its channels are going to be where 90% of your attention is spent. And that time spent has some in-game rewards too. The more channels you watch, the more channels the studio will create for you on subsequent days. And when I say subsequent days, I mean real life 24 hour days. New channels get added after a day has passed, the shopping channel delivers to you after a day has passed, almost nothing here happens in real time. It all but forces you to stop playing after a small session to pick it up the next day instead. Pokemon Channel takes advantage of the GameCube's internal clock not unlike Animal Crossing. But unlike Animal Crossing, whose content can run you up to 20 minute sessions over the course of a year, Pokemon Channel's content will run you 20 minute sessions over the course of a week. And I think that's why I'm having such a hard time finding fault with Pokemon Channel. There isn't a whole lot to the game outside of the main core channels, some of the room customization options are limited and weak, but the reality is that I only spent a few hours with the game and had a great time. The flaws don't have time to fester, and the game's heartwarming ending will send you off with a smile before you have time to get bored. Though the TV and its channels are the vast majority of your time spent in Pokemon Channel, you can step away and interact with the world a bit. While not watching, the game takes on more of a point-and-click adventure style of play. Clicking on different things in the environment will send Pikachu over to interact with them. Sometimes these will be objects, and other times these will be other Pokemon. Interacting with other Pokemon may give you a bit of in-universe trivia about said Pokemon, or sometimes it'll just be another friend for Pikachu to make. Though most of the exploration and interaction with other Pokemon will take place in your backyard and the surrounding area, there are a few bus trips you can take to some more exotic locations, like a beach or a forest. These locations will usually have different species of Pokemon to talk to, and occasionally a unique game or challenge of some sort, like fishing. Pokemon Channel is a game about the little things in life, like watching TV after a day of school, and more than just the programming itself, but the bumpers and commercials in between too. Maybe my fond memories of this game are clouding my ability to judge the actual game mechanics, or lack thereof, as harshly as I should be. But maybe that's okay. Games are more than just their mechanics. Games are art, sound, and writing, and so much more all wrapped up together for you to interact with. And the way you feel about those things and the experiences you derive out of them are just as important as the mechanics themselves. One way or another, if you give Pokemon Channel a shot, I think you will come to like its comfortable atmosphere and casual gameplay style. And if you don't, you can always change the channel.